Now let's use this complex exponential description, finally getting back to superposition. So we are going to superpose or add two solutions. And let's do the same amplitude and frequency, but different phase. OK? So in that case, z1 would be a um, e to the j omega t plus phi 1, and z2 would be a e to the j omega t plus phi 2. OK, so z1 plus 2, oh, you just add them. So z1 plus 2, if this were some physical situation where we were going to add those, like different initial conditions, whatever it might be, um, they would just go together. So you could pull out a common factor A, and you would have e to the j omega t plus phi 1 plus e to the j omega t plus phi 2. And here's where the exponential part really helps. <clears throat> With sinusoids, if you have two different things under the sinusoid, you're kind of stuck. You have to go to a bunch of trigonometric identities to deal with it. Here, <coughs> you can remember that if these two are added, it's really just the product of the exponents. So we can actually pull out the oscillating part, e to the j omega t. This is actually equal to a e to the j omega t, the oscillating part, times all that's left is the phase part, e to the j phi 1 plus e, e to the j phi 2. And keep in mind, there's no time here. Right? So even though it's an imaginary uh, exponential, it's got, a, it's got an imaginary part in the exponent, there's no time. So it's not an oscillating function. Those are just constants. When you're dealing with uh, complex exponentials, the phase part just acts like a constant multiplier. Right? So now, if you want to make it even a more simple, if you want to simplify it a little bit, one thing you could do is you can multiply by, um, uh, let me make sure I make it match my notes. Yeah, e to the j phi 1 over e to the j phi 1. Basically, just multiply it by 1 is a way to factor out an e to the j phi 1. So what you can get is that this thing is a e to the j omega t plus phi 1. Right, we just factored um, uh, 1 out. So this one is going over here. And then this one is going to divide through and give you this factor that looks like this. This one and that one cancel, so 1 plus e, and then you have this one over this one. That means you subtract the exponents. So 1 plus e to the j phi 2 minus phi 1. Okay. So if you are used to dealing with exponents, you know all I did was just factor out e to the j phi 1. I was just trying to show it in a lot of detail. So this is a form that's useful if we want to think about what happens when you have um, uh, superposition and you have things in and out of phase. Okay? So let's actually look at some of these um, plotted. So let me see. What if we have the difference in phase to be 0? Right? So here we have 1 on the x-axis. And we're going to plot this is time. And we're going to plot, say, this is x1. Okay? So just a sinusoid. And this is x2, also just a sinusoid. And we have them in phase. So phi 2 minus phi 1 is 0. That's what in phase means. They're sinusoids perfectly aligned on top of each other. So if you think back to that phase factor, it was 1 plus e to the j phi 2 minus phi 1 was the phase part. Right? Well, if phi 2 minus phi 1 is 0, e to the 0 is always 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So mathematically, this just sticks a 2 in front of the amplitude. And intuitively, if you just add these, you know if two things add in phase, two sinusoids add in phase, it just makes a bigger sinusoid. Everywhere it's positive and positive, it's even more positive. Everywhere it's negative and negative, even it's more, even more negative. Everywhere it was 0 and 0, it's still 0. It just makes a bigger sinusoid. Okay. We can do another case. We can do two sinusoids out of phase. So here's x-axis, here's time, here's x1 here, 
and here is x2. And now you can see we set it up where phi 2 minus phi 1 is equal to pi, 180 degrees out of phase. And if you think about the phase part, it's 1 plus e to the j, and then it's phi 2 minus phi 1, so it's pi e to the j pi. Well, we thought about what this is before when we were doing Euler's identity. This is equal to negative 1, right? Cosine of pi, the real part is negative 1. Sine of pi, the imaginary part, is 0. This is equal to negative 1. Therefore, the phase part multiplies the sinusoid, or the, the oscillating function, by 0. So mathematically, it says you get nothing. And sure enough, we know that if we add these two things out of phase, we're going to get nothing. Everywhere, this one's maximum, this one's minimum, you get 0. This one's minimum, that one's maximum, you get zero. When they're both zero, you get zero. Everything's zero. So you can see, intuitively, you can think about these functions um, uh, adding and subtracting, you know, constructive interference, destructive interference is what we'll eventually call it. But you can get it mathematically really simply with complex exponentials rather than dealing with a bunch of identities and trigonometry.